right guys, we're crossing the Pelosi River. We are coming into Bluffdale. There's not much in this town, but I was, as I was reading, I realized that there's a, they call it a suspension bridge, but it's actually a cable bridge somewhere in this little community that uh, is rumored to be the oldest in the United States. So before we check out the town and see what all it has to offer, we're gonna go to this bridge and, and have a look at it. And as you can see, as we're coming into town, there's just not much here. Uh, see some old historic buildings back when it was fire in a little town. There is quite a bit of uh, residents in this area. Like I said, it's, it's within commuting distance to Dallas Fort Worth area. Turn right onto County Road 149. But uh, yeah, I think it's got one gas station in town. Looks like a couple of junk shops. Uh, not much else. So we're going to go check out this bridge. Uh, Turn right onto County Road 149. Lived in this area most of my life and I never knew this thing was here. But uh, we'll see it together for the first time, I suppose. It says I'm about one Today minute from it. You will arrive at your destination. And, uh, we'll check it out together. But, yeah, you never know what you're going to find out here in the country. I, I grew up swimming in the Biloxi River, but it was a couple counties over. We're actually in Erath County now. I'll drop a link to the to the bridge. It looks like this is the bridge and it is now closed. We are gonna park here and uh, see what we can find. There is a historical marker, so we'll have a look at that. Um, I'll show you a picture so you can read it for yourself. But yeah, look at this old bridge. I never knew it was here. This bridge was built for wagon crossings back in the late 1880s, early 1890s area. So it's closed to foot traffic. I can't go on it. It's a cool old bridge. Could you imagine having to drive across this? I have no idea how many years it was here before they built this one. So I'm going to try to walk down and let you guys have a look at it. But it's pretty narrow, so hopefully I don't get ran over trying to do this. This is Paluxy River. In case you didn't know, this river is famous over in Glen Rose area for dinosaur footprints. When the river runs dry, you're able to see the footprints. If you've never been there, that is definitely worth the visit. I actually grew up in that area and spent many summers out in that park. It's uh, Dinosaur Valley State Park. Then over in Glen Rose, they've also got Fossil Rim. But yeah, check out this old bridge. Imagine having to drive across that. Water's pretty low right now. You can see that. There are times it gets to raging. I would have never known we got the nation's oldest cable bridge in my backyard until I happen to have a look. Yep, there it is, guys. Pretty interesting. It's in Bluffdale, Texas. Like I said, I'll drop a some coordinates if you guys wanted to come and see this. I highly suggest you pay attention to the sign and not walk on that because the uh, cables are still there. But it's starting to sag pretty good. Mighty good. Alright guys, we'll go uh, take a run through the town and see what we can find there. You can see a low water crossing. Looks like probably where people used to play in the, the water or maybe even get around it before this uh, bridge that I'm currently standing on was built. Over in Glen Rose, there's still several crossings where you got to drive through the river with no bridges. Uh, it's just not enough traffic in some places to justify bridges. Well, I enjoyed seeing that old bridge. I didn't know it was there. Uh, funny part of this story is I grew up around this area and really didn't know Bluffdale had that. I've always heard of stories of a swinging bridge around somewhere around Glen Rose area we may try to see if we can find that one I actually grew up in that town and I didn't really ever find that didn't go looking for it either but, so we'll take a drive through some of these neighborhoods guys it's uh it's kind of hit or miss really you've got some old houses that have been around not really getting taken care of and then there's multi-million dollar houses out in what they call a uh, Mountain Lakes is, I think, the development that they have out here. You can see at this time, gas price here is uh, two ninety nine a gallon or four twenty nine a gallon for diesel. So 
we'll take a drive down this town. You can see the old gas station over there. Uh, there is just not much to see. There's a little old antique shop. But uh, we'll drive through down this road for a minute. Actually, let's let's drive down here. That's a pretty nice house. Bet there's some history to that. It looks like the school. Not sure exactly what, what size school district this is, but it, it's small. I would say 1A, 2A. Probably play some six man football if I was guessing. Looks like they got an old tabernacle here that uh, probably doesn't see much use these days. But I'll take a look at Zillow and see what the average housing prices is. My, my guess it used to be pretty affordable to live around this area. This last couple of years, though, real estate has went through the roof. Uh, so I'm assuming it's probably in the three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar range. If you want a newer built house on a little bit of land, um, no telling what some of these older places might sell for. Maybe some that's worth the fortune, and maybe some that uh, you still pick up. Some fixer uppers in this town for sure. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much Bluffdale. There's a uh, there's just not a whole lot to see in this town. Still thriving community. Plenty of people live here. But just not a whole lot of commerce. I guess if you want to drive to work or work on a ranch locally, you might be able to make a living doing that. At will of a living is yet to be determined. Ranch hands usually do not get paid all that well, unfortunately. And they sacrifice a lot of time, blood, and sweat for these uh, major landowners. But they do get some free housing. So, well guys, that looks about like the neighborhood in, uh, inside of town. I'm not going to drive out to the housing development. We all have those. We know what those look like. Uh, I don't know about you, but I couldn't afford to live in one anyhow. So, all right. Well, here's our welcome to Bluffdale sign. Historical markers. Established in the 1870s. So, yeah, it's a slow little town just about there. There is a cemetery on top of this hill for the town of Thurber. They've got a gate and I'm not real sure if I'm allowed to drive up that or if I'm supposed to walk up it or if it's probably on land now. So uh, it's one of them touchy deals. I believe you got to ride away to the cemetery. But I'm in my wife's car so I'm not real sure whether I drive it or not. We might. There is the smokestack. I believe they made bricks here, uh, but this is was old coal mine town. Everything was owned by the mine. I guess all the houses they paid in scrip, they didn't even pay in cash. Um, so they had a general store uh, to where these guys would, would work and then have to buy their supplies from the company they worked for. So they're never really able to get ahead, but they did have a place to live. And I believe there was a school and there was a whole community here. I'm just not sure where it went. So guys, this is the smokestack in Thurber where the coal mining town used to be. Um, I'm gonna have to do a voiceover on this one. It was really windy out there and the audio did not work out too well. What you're seeing there is a small firehouse. Looks like it's been restored. It's full of, um, I guess, private belongings inside. So I'm not gonna film inside the windows on that for respect. I don't want anybody damaging that. What I'm looking at there is the old smokestack restaurant and then there's a little antique store there. So Thurber was an unincorporated community, also known as the first electrified, fully electrified city in Texas, I believe. Um, it was lo It's located about 75, 75 miles west of Fort Worth. It was between 1988 and 18, 1921. It was one of the largest producers of the Bitmus coal in Texas and the largest company town in the state with a population of over 10,000. The population of the community is 48 per the 2010 census. So it's pretty much a ghost town. There's not much left here besides this smokestack. And then there's some small rooms that I, I'll film just a, in a few minutes. Um, so the coal mining operations began in Thurber in 1886 and reached the peak around 1920 when the town had a population of approximately 8,000 to 10,000 for more than a dozen nationalities. Though Italian, Poles, and Mexicans predominated at the peak, Thurber was one of the largest bitmus coal mining towns in Texas. 
an established company town, the mining operations Thurber were unionized in 1903. And Thurber became the first totally closed shop town in the country. The Texas and Pacific Coal Company was not owned by the Texas and Pacific Railroad, but it lay near its line and provided the trains that the company needed with much fuel. Um, the Texas and Pacific Coal Company created a subsidiary company, the Texas Pacific Mercantile Manufacturing Company, to operate its mercantile operation with company-run retail outlets like the grocery, dry goods, hardware, and drug stores, which I imagine that's probably over there where the, uh, the restaurant is nowadays, as well as saloons and other establishments. The company that owned the town, the Texas and Pacific Coal Company, also pr produced virtual virtified paving bricks that were used throughout Texas in the southern half of the United States. By 1920, conversion of the locomotives from coal and oil per reduced the demand and lowered the prices, and the miners left the area through the 1920s. However, the, um, the Ranger Oil Field is about, I think, about 15 miles west of here, and oil was uh, discovered there, which you'll be able to see the, the sign up here. It says the evolution of an oil company. So they were able to... Um, pivot to that. Um, the Texas Oil Boom and the company rebranded itself as the Texas Pacific Coal and Oil Company and eventually the Texas Pacific Oil Company. Nationwide, there's, there seems to be several thousand people whose roots go back to Thurber. There are several landmarks in Thurber, which is the Thurber Cemetery. We didn't visit that one, but we do visit the Davidson Cemetery to, to show you the architecture of the brickwork that was done there. Um, they say there's still 127 million, I think, cubic feet or cubic pounds of, of coal still left to mine at a future date if it if price was to ever come back. I'm assuming uh, this this coal company or oil company still owns the, the mineral rights to the area. Um, let me see. There's a restored and furnished coal miner's house on New York Hill. I'm much more and much more, it says. A historic Thurber smoke stop can clearly be seen from Interstate 20 near Thurber. So if you're ever traveling down Interstate 20 in between Fort Worth and Abilene or, or coming from West Texas and going east, um, you'll definitely see this right off the interstate. It's, it is definitely worth a stop and checking out. Um, you're not gonna be able to see it, but all the way up there at the top, it is uh, marked 1908 on the smoke stack. So, could you imagine building this thing back in 1908? Um, this building here didn't have any labels on it, so I'm assuming, and I could be completely wrong, but I imagine this was probably the power station for the town. Um, it's just a shell of itself now. The windows are gone, the roof's gone. Just an old brick building there. So I'm just walking around the area, kind of looking at what I can see. Um, just caught a glimpse of the firehouse. But yeah, this old building standing the test of time. I wish somebody would restore it. Um, there's private property signs all over the building. So uh, I didn't trespass being in Texas. They, they take property rights pretty serious here. So I did not want to get in trouble for that. Um, I did notice little holes in the ground. They kind of went down deep. I don't know if that might be a coyote or rabbit hole or, you know, just some sort of critter living down in that one. Um, all the coal mines were underground shafts. Uh, I have no idea where they were located at, though. If you come over to here, there was the other side of the fences. I guess we'd call that the east side. There's some old rooms out here in the woods, too, where nature's completely taking them back. down trees and see if I can get past them to where you guys might be able to see but it looks like a footing of an old building pretty good pit right there like I said I don't know where the mines are but evidently there was 17 of them around um, and all of them were underground so that may be the interest one I have no idea I'd be lying over there. I don't know if you can see through the trees or not, but there's some more bricks to the building. There's a lot of history that nature's taken over. Um, so yeah, we'll look and see on Wikipedia, see if we can find any information. 
but the town of Berber is pretty well gone. See a few random bricks laying here. I don't know if any of them say Berber on them. Not looking likely. And I'm a firm believer of leaving things as they lie. No mess with things. Leave no trace. Okay, guys, this is the Davidson Cemetery that I stumbled across. It's um, If you're headed towards Mingus, you'll see the Davidson Cemetery Road. You can also Google it and find it. Um, it, it says it was established in July of 1864 uh, for a man named James Reed who was killed by Indians. Um, James Reed's descendants placed a permanent marker on his grave in 1989, it says. Okay. So the land was donated in 1862 by Stuart and Strawn families who were early settlers of the area and friends of the Davidsons. Um, you'll see on these plaques where the brickwork was done um, on, excuse me, 1922 it looks like is what I read there. And uh, you'll see where the land was donated by the, the family of the Stuarts and the Strongs. Guys, when I was walking through this cemetery, I was really struck at how many stewards were in the cemetery but what really got me was it looked like it was a rough time to try, try to raise a family any children there were a lot of kids graves around the turn of the century so uh you get time to stop by here and check this out and it's definitely worth the visit um it says it's one of the largest most picturesque uh cemeteries in the in the area i didn't walk around and film any graves i felt like that would be dis disrespectful Well, thanks for watching this long, guys. If you enjoy these types of videos, please check back off. And I'm going to try to post at least a video a week, maybe two, if I can get enough filming done in between my day job and, and my passions. So, guys, um, I'm going to only try to get better with my videos. Can't get any worse, I don't think. So, once again, thanks for watching. And if you like it, throw me a like and a subscribe. If you've got any comments about where I should go next in the area, please let me know.